Good day everyone, Garage King here. Today I have a special treat for you, quite the repair. We have a Lexus IS250. This is a second generation, 2006 to 2013. And we have a rear axle problem on the driver's side. It is clicking. Now, one of the telltale signs is if you take a look here, you could see how dirty it is here. You can see there's just a ton of dried up grease. And if we look here on the passenger side, you can see it is nice and clean. So what happened is on the driver's side, it's pumped itself out of grease, gone dry. So let's replace this axle. Three, two, one. So hopefully you're as excited for this job as I am. And let me tell you, this job is quite the job. It is not an easy job, not for the faint of heart. So you're going to have to pay attention. First things first, we just have to take the brakes off. And to keep the video moving quickly, I'm going to do some voice overlay while at the same time, let you hear my voice during the repair. Right now, if we pan back, we're right in here, guys. Uh, I took the bolt out, but this thing is way too tight in here, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it out, so I just wanna be very careful. But because we're gonna take off this thing here, what I wanna do is just disconnect this connector here. So if I pan down here, well, there's a plastic tab, and we're just gonna pull that down. You can see I'm actually moving it. There we go. You can see I'm moving it down. And then once I move it down, I should be able to slip this thing off. There we go. And next up, because we're going to take the axle out, I always clean up the threads. Just makes it that much nicer. And for most of the bolts here, the R19 millimeter. You can see I'm using my impact gun to take the bolts off. All right, guys, so I'm having trouble getting this bolt out there. And I don't want to heat it because obviously there's rubber bushings in there. Don't want to destroy the bushings. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to undo this thing. I've already put penetrating oil on it. Uh, I guess a can sort of type of control arm. And if I can move this out of the way, then I should be able to get the impact right on there. All right guys, so you can see I'm struggling with the bolt a bit, but I'll go back and forth, it'll come out. I'm gonna have to undo this right here, uh, same size bolts. So unfortunately my socket won't fit in here because of these things. So these are, I guess, 13 mil bolts and I'm just gonna take this brace off. All right, so let's do it. Let's take this brace off, not a big deal, but the suspension piece here, I'm just loosening the bolt. I don't actually have to take it off. And now here we go, we can get the impact in there and the nut comes off. Now just to give myself more room, I'm going to undo uh, the emergency brake cable, just these brackets, just so it pulls down. Just give myself a little bit more room when I'm taking out the axle because I'm gonna have to move that spindle part around. Oh, and if it help, if I got the right socket, guys, it's not a 14, I guess it's maybe a 13. There we go, this brake line. Now we got a lot more room, uh, you know, just to deal with things. And then just so I don't lose this bolt, Maybe I'll just stick it back up there, get a few turns. And I do that quite a bit just so I never have an issue with the bolts. Now here you can see the bolt is actually turning in the bushing. How I actually got it free was I did use a torch a little bit in the air hammer. I heated the end of this bolt, I uh, used the air hammer, uh, obviously with the nut on so I don't distort the threads, just to, just to push it through a little bit. And now you can see um, if I go like this with the ratchet, there you go, you can see it's it's turning. It's turning a little bit in there. So that's good. So I actually broke it free. So I'm not gonna bore you guys with this, but all I'm gonna do is keep shooting it with penetrating fluid and just keep going back and forth, back and forth until it comes out. And that was probably the toughest bolt out of them all. But as you can see here, I did need the hammer on occasion just to give the suspension a few love taps here and there just to break things free. But I always put the nuts back on afterwards just to protect the threads. Cause last thing you wanna do is be chasing threads in a job like this. Now this socket I got here, it's supposed to be a 32 millimeter uh, 12 point, uh, but I found an old one, one and a quarter, so I didn't have to buy one, and uh, one and a quarter fits. Okay, so now that I got this bolt out, that was a toughie, uh, and everything else is loose. Once I just disconnect this, pop this through, and then I just got the one bolt there that's uh, already loose. It's coming out, you can see that's, uh, that's the bolt right there. There we go, where's a better shot? There we go. Then the whole spindle should just come right off, but keep in mind I have the brake line attached, so I put a little piece of wood there. Hopefully I can just set it aside and uh, that'll be it, and then we can pop it out of the rear uh, differential. Now, if you're wondering, yes, the struggle is real. It's uh, It takes a little bit of finesse to get this thing off. And you know, even to remove this bottom bolt here, you can see I'm using my impact just to spin it in order to get it out. And I'll share with you, there's a certain 
way for me that I found after monkeying around with this thing for quite some time to put it back together. There's a certain sequence of events for putting the suspension back together. So I'll number them uh, once we're putting the suspension back together. And I'll also put up a chart that shows all the torque values. So you can just pause the video and you'll be able to see all the torque values. Now, when taking out a rear axle, you normally never pull like this because the inner joints will always come apart if you do that. But on this vehicle, it actually didn't. And it was the only way that I was able to so. get it out. Now, take a listen to this. You can see it's clicking quite a bit, so it definitely needed to be replaced. Next on the to-do list is clean, 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 and you wanna clean these bolt holes very well because you definitely don't wanna fight with them when you're putting everything back together. Trust me on that one. Next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of axle fluid on our new axle just to lubric lubricate it up. If ever you're putting any car parts together and you're not sure what to lubricate a car part with, always lubricate it with what it seals. So this seals axle fluid. So we're gonna use a little bit of axle fluid. And for those that are curious what type of axle fluid it takes, you can see for the rear, it takes GL5, Toyota LT7585. And I think the LT stands just for light truck. But don't quote me on that, I could be wrong. Next up, we're gonna put the axle in. Now you wanna give it a little twist before you start pushing on it because you'll be able to feel the teeth in the rear differential and you want to make sure you have it lined up. And there you can see it snapped right into place. That's how it should be, that easy. And if you were paying attention, you would have seen just a moment ago that I was putting anti-seize on the actual bolts, the, the, the whole part of the bolt, and that is just to prevent future rust. Very important, I think. Now for the lineup, okay. Number one, the very bottom bolt to the suspension. That's what you have to get in first. Uh, I tried it a few different ways and this is the way it worked best for me. If you have another way, please leave it in the comments below, but that's what I found best. Number two, the top bolt right here for the suspension. This is the most upper one. Number three is the, I guess if you wanna call it a tie rod. And then before we go to number four, we have to tighten the bolt up here. So I used a big pair of pliers here, tightened it up. Now here's number four, this sucker in here, I used a punch to line it up. This one's the most tough one I thought to get in anyway. I threaded it in and then I had to use another pair of pliers right here just to squeeze the suspension to draw it in line so you would be able to see the bolt coming through. Give it a couple taps with a hammer and it should come through but make sure when you give it a few taps with a hammer it is pretty much lined up because the last thing you want to do is damage the threads when it is coming through. You don't want to do that. Next up is the ABS sensor. You can see here we'll just put one bolt in and we'll snap it together. Then what we're going to do is we're going to tighten up all the lines. Here you can see I'm throwing up all the torque specs, but you know, after giving it some thought, I'm thinking a lot of you are probably gonna be watching this on your mobile phone. So you know what, I'll throw up a bigger image later. Don't worry about this. Let's move on to number five. Here's number five. This is that bottom bolt. And surprisingly, this one was not that hard to get in. So I was pleasantly surprised and very happy. I didn't have a lot of fighting to do. Okay, as promised, here are the torque specs. So we're gonna pan through very slowly. If you notice in the middle of the screen, there's a black dot. What the black dot means is that bolt or fastener or nut is not reusable. And we're gonna talk more about that in a little bit. So next up, we're gonna put our brakes back together. And you know, while we have them apart, we may as well do a brake service. As you can see, these ones were just recently done by myself. I did them recently, but you know what? Might as well give them a good service. Now, speaking of fasteners, here you go. You can see this is the fastener for the actual axle. It does say it cannot be reused. I know a lot of people do reuse them, but anyway, that's what the instructions say. I'm gonna give it a little torque down with the impact gun, but I'm not gonna to torque it fully. All right, guys, and there it is all put together. We're still gonna to torque that center nut once the vehicle is down on the ground, but I give it a little zap there just to make sure it's tight because this way when we rest uh, the vehicle down, drop the vehicle back down to the ground, uh, we don't want all that side load on the bearing, so this takes it off and makes sure that uh, the weight is equally distributed amongst that bearing. Now, I did order two new bolts, you can see here, and they were supposed to be for those ones not reusable, but you know what, they look totally different. They don't have this flange, so you know what, I just, I use the old ones. So that was just me and what I felt comfortable with, but I showed you the directions. All right, so now for the final torque, the vehicle is on the ground with all the weight on the vehicle, and you can see there, 214 foot-pounds or 290 newton meters, and that torque specification is used on a wide variety of Lexus vehicles torquing the tire up here uh, with a torque wrench. And now here's all the tools I used. So I'm not gonna go through each one because no one is going to listen to that anyway. But I do wanna say this is a fairly intense job. And if you're not gonna put a few hours uh, aside to do it or you don't feel comfortable doing this job, I mean, by all means, take it to a shop. 
Anyway, that is it. Hopefully you've enjoyed and I will see you next week.